Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the Mental Mobility Podcast. This is episode number 108. We are here with my friend Ron. Ron, uh, if you can see behind him, first off, this is the first podcast that it's been dual 4K images inside it, which means you're getting really good video quality. Usually just someone on a phone, like taking a shit with their microphone. You sometimes no microphone. And you just hear them farting and pissing the entire time. Right, but that's fine because that's, that's what we listen to. But today, he popped on. I, I didn't expect this view that I get to, to see on my computer. So it's a real view. And this actually goes to show how much detail and how much, you want to say passion, but not even passion, just really the love of creating and making sure it's right and making sure it's smooth and making sure it's what he likes. You know, so just by seeing that, that to me shows a lot, you know, it's almost like, you know, uh, like an interview. It's like, oh man, this guy got dressed up today. You know, he, and that's what he does with his work. And that's why we're here today. It's because I only know this much about what Ron does, right? But I want to know a little bit more, you know, why does he do it? What is he trying to influence? Who's he trying to connect with? And this is what we're going to find out in episode number 108 of the Mental Mobility Podcast. I almost said Jersey to Vegas. I keep doing it. I can't. It's, it's been two years of saying that, so you'll have to deal with that for a little while. But guys, welcome, Ron. Say what's up. What's up, guys? Um, like I was saying, Pete, man, it, it, it's really good to to be here. Um, you know, I've been a fan of, of, of you doing your thing, you know, ever since you started when you moved over to Vegas. Um, but yeah, my name is Ron DeLeon. Um, I actually go by um ytc as sort of my unit mu uh music moniker um ytc is uh stands for yours to create um you know i can go into that a little bit more but um yeah i i, I actually you know I, I i'm a music producer i'm a father um i i own a a, a really small digital design company called ytc media as well um but yeah music is my main thing and and that's kind of what i do and that's kind of what i am you know quote unquote uh known for i'm really happy to be here pete that's oh, all yeah. i can say <laughs> it's all right man you set it up but we're really happy to have you and like as you speak and i never knew you had a, another digital company as well uh media company so that's that's perfect and it kind of explains a little bit more about that but with, so let's get right to it. For me, my main question is, why is music the outlet? You know, a lot of people, for me, it's like working out, fighting. Why is music? I'm sure you're a very big sports lover, and I will get to that too. But, like, why music? What does that do? Um, You know, it, it, it's kind of, I feel like it, it's been a part of me for forever. So um, when I was younger, I was actually, you know, I started off as, like, an MC. Um you know, I, I came out with a few albums. I was part of a group. I was like around the age of 13 is is kind of where I found my sort of, uh, you know, footing in music. And, you know, I was really into hip hop. Um, and, you know, that's where kind of where I got started. And, and that that was sort of my way of my creative outlet. You know, it, you know, I just I really like doing creative things and, you know, it's, it's kind of part of the name, you know, yours to create. It's uh, so I just, I just fell in, in love with, with the creation aspect of it, you know, um, creating something from nothing and, you know, being able to kind of get that out there and share it with people. Um, you know, music is just my medium. Uh, you know, I think, you know, there's a lot of other mediums that people can go to as far as like um, creation goes, like writing or art. Uh, mine just happens to be music. And, you know, I, I fell in love with hip hop and and I started emceeing and I needed actual music and instrumentals to rhyme over. And then that's when I kind of started making beats. Um, but that, that that's kind of how I got started. And then, um, yeah, I know I'm a little all over the place, but. No. You know, I took like a hiatus from making music um, for a while, you know, simply because of, you know, responsibilities. Life, as, yeah. Yeah, life you know, um, you know, the day to day responsibilities that you have to do, especially when you become a father. That's that's kind of where I, I put music on the back burner um, for a few years. And then, you know, I, I got into this this point in my life where. 
um, it was, uh, I, you know, I was, I was really unhappy with kind of where I was at, you know? So it was like, oh, I'm working the nine to five and, and, you know, doing the daddy life. Like, I'm like, oh man, is this really me? It's kind of having that, you know, identity crisis kind of yeah. you know happening, you know, it was like, all right. Um, I started feeling unfulfilled, you know? So it was like, all right, you know, what, you know, you start searching and stuff like that. And, yeah, for sure. you know, at, at, at the end of the day, it was like, I, I kept getting this idea in the back of my head because I had all my music equipment like in storage. And it's like, just take your music equipment back out, bro. Like, <laughs> just just take that out, you know? Um, and I did. And, and that was four years ago. And it just, you know, kind of ballooned from there. I, I just never stopped. And, you know, I am where I am in, in terms of the music right now. So some that's a it's cool to know like it's a, a perfect message for people that may be or used to be creative right and then life did take over like it just happens you know you don't you know other things become a priority especially as a father right it's like all right no nah, i'm not going to change his diaper because i got some music to me. you know it's there's <laughs> there's a difference right for me too it's like ah you know i'm not going to not go to the gym and like work because I'm like, you know, so yeah, and that there's always it's never over, you know, I feel like a lot of people think it's over because they used to do something and but it's something you used to love, and that that creativity needs to be out you yes. there's so many miserable people yes. nine to five because they don't don't yes. do shit they like right yes. because it's it's too hard, I don't have time, you know and 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 that you know, um, just to speak a little bit on on that too, it's like. Um, it, 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 it's, it's not easy, you know, it, it's not like you're going to magically have this time available to you, especially when you're at a, a place in your life where, you know, you're a husband and a father and you got, you know, things that you need to take, take care of. It's, it's hard, you know, um, to find that time, but, um, you know, you just got to really find a way to manage your time and, and figure out like how you can do that because I was miserable, you know? Um, I, I want to say like five years ago, I was, I was straight up miserable, mm. um, hated my job. I, you know, hated the stuff that I had to do. I'm like, I have so much more to offer, uh, to, you know, this world. Like, you know, I've always been that kind of thinker where it's like, you know, it not like on the bigger picture kind of thing. Like, yo, I have so much more to offer this world and I, I, I can impact somebody in some way with, with my creations. Um, so, you know, I had to really, you know, take a, a look inside and, and figure out like, is this going to make this feeling go away of like this emptiness and, you know, this identity crisis that I was going through. And, really? you know, I, I gotta say it, it's not perfect. Like, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, it's, it's a work in progress as, as it always will be. But, you know, I can definitely say for myself, like I, I've been at a better place mentally um, because of the fact that, you know, I, I got back into doing something that I love that kind of filled that void that I was feeling at that time. Like you said, it's not 100 percent right out of the hole, but you're like 80. You know, yeah. and a lot of people think it's got to be 100 all the time, whereas yeah. just doing something you love makes you feel so much better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, it's just, um, like I said, it, it's not, it's not going to be easy, especially when you have a, a ton of stuff on your plate. And, um, but you know, I, around the same time I got back into music, I was going, uh, you know, this time I was like, oh, you know, feeling sort of depressed. I got into really, um, you know, the, I guess they call it like the growth mindset now or right. self, um, self-improvement self-development I, right. I got really big into that <laughs> um and it was uh you know it was it was life-changing for me um to what 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 came out as a result of that was like you you really have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable you know um you know doing things that not necessarily you know because the majority of my time I make music is at night, right? I put the kids mm. to bed and, and that's usually the only time. Like you think I, I don't want to just 
um, watch Netflix or, or, or YouTube at night and, and just right. lay in my bed next to my wife. Like, of course, of course right. I want to do that. But you know, um, does it, does it mean that much to you? Like, do you, do you have the strength or the fortitude to actually, you know, do it and, and, and doing this self development thing, you know, really helped me with that. Um, and, and then it goes back to, you know, the, the movement, um, the, uh, you know, in, in terms of exercise, you know, to bring it back into, you know, the mental mobility part of it, like I run too, you know, um, right. and it, it it's weird too, because I, you know, I got a lot of friends that are like, why are you running, bro? Like that doesn't even do nothing. Like you don't get, you, you, you're not getting diesel from running. You're like, you know, <laughs> you're not gonna have a crazy, but I'm like, you know, <laughs> and I got to explain it to them. I was like, you know, the reason for me running is not, necessarily you know the the physical um the physical aspect of it it's more of the mental aspect of it um you know because i i really feel like the running helped me um kind of develop uh you know like i said the mental fortitude because when you're doing long distances you know i just did the half marathon in yes. city um when you're doing long distances you have to to break through that wall because there's going to be that point where it's like i can't do this anymore my body's breaking down i can <laughs> barely breathe but then you if you can find it in you to 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 get past that point like that that's everything so like at the end of that race you're like damn i did that and then you know the the magical thing is that it carries over to the things in your life you know, you, you bring that mentality over to, you know, y y your passions and, 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 you know, how you, you want your life to be like, it's just, there's another thing, the, another book that I, I read, you know, during this, you know, my, my process of, of bettering myself, I think it was a uh, Grant Cardone. It's called mm. the 10 times. 10X. Rule. 10X. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, it, there was one thing that stuck with me in that book. It was like, you know, if you're trying your hardest, if you think you're trying your hardest, you got to do 10 times that to get to where you want to be. So like, I always took that as like, all right, yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm putting my all, but I'm not, I have more to give. Right. You just don't, you just don't know it yet. So. No. Yeah. And running definitely teaches you that. Like, it's a great, you know, that was one thing I was going to ask you is like, you know you i know you are a runner but did you do other stuff but now you just said it like marathon running is no joke like people think it's oh i get up and run yeah you can try running around the block <laughs> that shit's hard <laughs> you know because it takes like two miles to get warmed up <laughs> and yeah. now now you actually I mean, turned so, on so just to clarify i did the half you know i didn't do the the full right uh my wife did the full so salute to my wife marie because she killed yeah. it she did the full um, but you know, half it, it nonetheless is it, it, pretty damn hard. Uh, it's 12 miles, 12.6, yeah. 13.1, 13. Oh, shit, I don't know anything. 13.1, <laughs> <laughs> 13 26. 26.3. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, running has helped with uh, you know, just pushing through those things, you know, back to you know, getting to um you know, just filling those voids and, and, and finding that thing that you were once creative at and you don't feel like you have the time, you know, if you, if you develop the right mindset, you, you can definitely, um, you know, get back to it. And, and it doesn't seem like it, it's that hard once you, you know, build these habits. Right. Very true. Very true. I am. Um, I'm going to spin off this because we're just going to go a little, I guess more into the I went, past. I went a lot of ways there. So. No, it's fine. Keep <laughs> listen. Don't ever feel restricted. Just go. Right. I don't want to step over you. Sometimes I'm like, no, just keep talking. Don't. If I get silent, it's because I'm really listening and like I'm okay, just cool. letting you talk. You know, because it's the best. The worst All is right. when like in, I, if I interrupt and then you lose that train, it's like fuck. There could have been something there that I forgot. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I'm yeah, like, hey, yeah, you know, yeah. what, you know, it's a good story. Ooh, no, it's about you. You know, awesome. Um, I want to know more about you and for me is like when I do this and I created YouTube stuff was because I was fat. I went through stuff, you know, and my main goal here is to kind of just 
relay messages. And now the reason this is like most listeners know is I do this for my kids, right? Because mm-hmm. like I say, if I'm not here tomorrow, at least they could watch these videos and be like, oh, dad, talk to this guy. And maybe this little message they could get out of me versus someone telling them my story. I don't like that. I'd rather me tell my story to them. Right. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff that I create is based off trauma or hard times or anything that I had to go through. Tell me something for you. Like, why was it music? What were you trying to, as an artist, you're always escaping something, right? There's something that we're trying to, to move, you know, trying to yeah. find. So I, yeah. I, that makes so, sense. So, yeah. So like, why, why music, why was music that outlet for me? Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, like I said, I, I think it was just something, um, uh, that I was like super passionate about, passionate about like my entire life. Um, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, it was, it was something that I did, um, you know, when I was younger, uh, right. in my teen years, it, it was like really big for me in my teen years. Like I went all in, Yeah. um, I moved out of the house. Um, I was living in a studio apartment and like straight up artist life like i went all in Mm. um yeah dropped out of college um you know my parents you know typical filipino parents weren't happy weren't happy about that (laughs) um so yeah i had to deal with all that but like you know um i I felt like it was worth it for the music that's how strongly i felt about the music and for me to not be doing it i i think subconsciously my 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 mind was telling me like, you know, when I was feeling that emptiness, it was like, yeah, you know, you know why, right? It, it's because your music equipment is in storage right now. Take that shit out mm-hmm. and start creating again. So, um, you know, and, and it came at a good time because like I said, during that time, I was like super unhappy with my job. It, it was a well-paying job, but you know, at the same time, I, I'm not one for that. Like it was, um, you know, it's good that I get to take care of my family with it. But, um, for me personally, I I just feel like, um, purpose is a lot, you know, um, what is your purpose? Like, is your purpose just to do this nine to five, this meaningless stuff? Like, Mm -hmm. of course, you know, I, I still need to do it to, to provide, but, um, am I happy, you know? Am I happy? Um, it, and for me, it was like, does that translate? Like, if I'm unhappy, does that translate over to my kids? Does that seep into, you know, subconsciously, you know, how they're going to grow up or how they feel? Um, so, you know, it was it was it was just good. Uh, not good. But, um, you know, at the time, like I, I just realized something told me, like I said, something told me it was like, take that shit out start making music again and you know it it, it uh like i said it's helped it's it, it's it's benefit benefited sure. me a lot for sure and you can you can see it you can hear it you can know you, we listen to your stuff what would you label your your sound as i, I that's uh, what i want to know like is yeah, there a label my, on it um you know i tend not to try and put labels on it you know at times uh because like i i, I just create um what i'm feeling at the time and it could be hmm. you know um you know it could be like funky or it could be really super um contemplative music but for the most part um it's typically uh, like a boom bap which okay. is which is like your 90s hip hop uh sound right. uh infused with uh like electronic sounds okay um so I would say it, it kind of falls into the lo-fi hip hop category, but not so lo-fi, not like beats to 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 study to kind right. of thing, you know. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of my beats probably, you know, the beats to beats to fight to, you know, because um, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's weird because I, I just channel the emotions that I'm feeling at the time into the music. So. Um, they all sonically kind of have the same sound to where it's like crunchy drums, a lot of texture um, and uh, uh, distorted audio. Um, but at the same time, the, the the feelings that they represent could be, you know, when, when I'm in an angry mood, it's it's more of an aggressive style 
when I'm in a reflective mood, then you can get that really, you know, laid back, uh, contemplative style. Yeah. Um, so it really depends on the emotion that I'm feeling at, at, at the time. And, and, and that's what I love about it too, because it's like, I'm imprinting myself into this tangible thing that you can also, um, digest or, you know, take in with you. So. Right. That was actually answered the question I was going to ask, like, is there, is there a time where you had like a rough day and, you know, put the kids to bed, you know, you just have that angst where you just go in the studio and just fucking make something and create something, you know, and you just set yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it happens all the time. It, it, it just depends on, you know, the way I'm feeling it, which is such a great, um, which makes it such a great thing for me and, and an outlet for me to, to kind of channel these emotions and, and, and put them out there. This question is going to go off topic, but why do you like the Knicks? <laughs> <laughs> I know I, my kids probably ask me this all the time because, you know, unfortunately yeah. they, they get handed down the, the fandom, you know? So <laughs> yeah, like the Knicks never win. Like why are we Knicks fans? <laughs> That's why. So yeah. So it's actually the only sports team that my family can agree on. Oh. actually, Cause like we're, we're split between, you know, Jets and Giants. I'm a Jets fan. Yep. The rest of my family are Giants fans. Um, Yankees, I'm a Yankees fan. Uh, a lot of my uh, family are Mets fans. But when it comes to basketball, the Knicks are where it's at. And uh, we've been, you know, it's just a family thing. We've been Knicks fans, you know, um, since I was younger. And, you know, we, we just got past the torch, so yeah. to say, you know. Um, yeah. Nets weren't so big, like, when I was younger, you know? Like, no. especially with my parents, the old school Filipinos. Yeah. Like, my mom was telling me that she used to go, you know, to, to MSG to, <laughs> to you know, watch, like, uh, Walt Frazier play, you know? Yeah. And it was, like, you know, $2 uh, for a ticket yep. kind of thing, you know? So <laughs> yeah. it, it's been in my family, um, you know, for the generation. So it's going to keep going. Nice. That's just a, always a question. You know, there's always a reason, you know, and people are Knicks fans. It's terribly to say I'm not a fan anymore. I'm a watcher, but I am a Celtics watcher. Okay. I am. Okay. I know. And that's why I had to ask the question. <laughs> because right. they don't like each other. But same thing. My dad put up this big giant Larry Bird poster where his balls are in my face. It was like six <laughs> foot Larry Bird taking a jump shot. I'm looking at his dick. <laughs> in short shorts the entire time you i guess i funny. like the celtics you know and then i got mark das to know <laughs> you know what's funny is that like my actually one of my cousins is the black sheep and he is like a super celtics fan but he's a little <laughs> you know he, he he grew up during the the celtics heyday of, of bird mikhail parish yes. Ainge. so you know they were you know that team right you know at that time so i guess that that's kind of where he got his uh his uh, Celtics uh, fandom from same same they moved yeah. to Pierce and then it was like eh, after that like 94 then I kind of stopped for a long time yeah you know? and then this year I watched a little bit because I got it for free I don't have cable <laughs> so whatever Hulu gives me I saw this <laughs> I saw the Nets run I was like all right let's watch playoffs <laughs> first time ever <laughs> but ocean but yeah are you excited about the Jets I am um it, it, it's more of an excitement of Let's see. It, it, you know, being a Jets fan, Pete, you know, yep. is we don't get our hopes up nope. because the Jets will continually, you know, <laughs> hang the, the, the carrot in front of your face and then, you know, just smash it. Yep. Just shoot the shit, like shoot the hell out of that carrot. Like, because <laughs> that's just what the Jets do. You know, right. like just last season, we had a great start to the season. And then all of a sudden we just freaking lost like seven games in a row now we're out of the playoffs like the so shit like that so yeah. i'm excited to see what rogers can bring to the table the new right. pieces you know um you know the new uh, oc i i can go on and on about the jets but yeah i'm sure yeah, the, the the new you know offensive coordinate coordinator yep. that worked with rogers so i'm, I'm really excited Brees hall is coming back because yep. Brees hall was like a huge oh. piece once he was um try losing like, oh, he's such a big piece, man. Yeah, that, that we lost last year. I was, yep. uh, you know, I, I really wanted to get his jersey. At yeah. the time, I, I felt like he was like the missing piece. So he's coming back. But, you know, like I said, it's yep. it's more of a, all right, I'm not going to go crazy. You got to keep a level <laughs> head. Keep your feet on the ground. And then That's we'll it. see, like, you know. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. But you know, I, I always look forward to football season. So hell yeah, it's a, uh, it's fun, man. Everyone thinks I'm a Raiders fan because I, <laughs> I have a Raiders hat. Like I work at the stadium, so I just got I can wear Raider stuff. So I have yeah, to wear yeah. it now. I got it when it gets cold out. I just put it on. I'm like are you? Oh, are you? Yeah. they start talking Raider shit to me. I'm like, I know. I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. So I'm going to stop wearing this hat. I actually bought a Jets shirt <laughs> just to have go. one, just in case, you know, not even a legit one. Cause those were like $90. I was like, I'll get the $25 one <laughs> for now. <laughs> See what happens. Um, Back to, back to music. You were just on Serato, correct? Yes. Serato.com. Yeah. So, I, uh, I, Serato's Twitch. Yeah. Serato's Twitch. I know you like follow them. A lot of your, I want to say, people you look, looked up to in the music industry have been showcased yeah. on there. And for you to be showcased on that, like, how oh. did that feel? Man. Um, you know, when I got the call, it was, uh, it was surreal to me. Um, because, you know, uh, the, the show was actually called Serato's kitchen and, um, you know, they invite a, a producer to uh, live stream on their Twitch channel and, you know, uh, make music live, you know, on stream. And so I've been a fan of the show for, you know, ever since I got back into making music mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I always said to myself like, oh man, it would be so crazy if I was on that show, you know, from when I started because, mm, wow. Yeah. Um, wow. because it was a big deal to me. Like yeah. Serato is a major player in the, in, in, you know, in music, you know, Serato is the reason why DJs don't use vinyl records anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the, you know, they're, they're really, you know, big in the, in the, in the music industry. So, um, and then on top of that, the, the, the producer guests that they had were, were, were definitely people that, that I admire, um, and, and I looked up to, I mean, they had like some absolute legends, uh, on this show. So when, when they, when they reached out to me, I was kind of, I was kind of in disbelief, you know, I was like, right. what? I was like, do you really want me um, <laughs> to do the show? Like, I mean, because like I said, I was like, this is something that I've always wanted to do. And from the beginning, I was like, oh, it'd be insane if I was on that show. And then um, it happened. Uh, I, I just, yeah, I was sort of in disbelief when, when I got the call, but then um, I, I slowly started to, uh, you know, just get a little bit more comfortable. And that's, that's the other thing too, is like, I don't, I, I'm not sure if I have like a clear picture of how other people view me and my art. Um, I create and I put it out there um, to share it. But, you know, it, it, when I get the feedback, it's like, ah, oh, I, I don't even, you know, it, is it that good? Or like, right. <laughs> you know, you know, it's just, uh, it, it, it was just an honor for me to be on that show gotta be and like you said like when you first started you're like man i want to be on that show and like just that just yeah. that there got me i was like oh such a good feeling <laughs> yes insane like uh, insane. you know it, it, it's insane like because I, I was watching i was on the other side i was watching for for all the episodes um because like i, I you know i just really admired and, and looked up to the producers and i kind of wanted to learn from them um and see get into get inside their process of making music and um that's that's how i became a fan of the uh, of the show and then for me to actually be on the other side of it to where i'm kind of giving my um giving them an inside look to my process was uh right. it was just a beautiful thing i'm just thinking about the feeling that you've had to have had that's why you know just like <laughs> yeah you know what i mean it's like anyone it's like i don't know that you, you look up to all these people and you're one of them now you know it's so cool it, it, it's it's wild because um i had that feeling with that and then i also had it with um uh it was another thing related to the music uh was uh there's this show or there's this beat challenge that ski beats um mm -hmm. has and ski beats is legendary producer um produced majority of reasonable doubt uh jay-z's first album um camp low um you know lucini yeah yep. really like you know all these classic records uh and ski beats is he he holds these competitions like beat competitions and that's kind of how i got uh quote unquote on the map is is beat competitions um mm -hmm. but yeah he held these beat competitions 
and uh, it's called Smack Pack, and he was doing a Smack Pack Live, um, which was in New York City at this studio called Sound Collective. And I caught the first two episodes and like really dope producers, same thing. I'm like, man, these producers are doing their thing. Like, I, I you know, I know all of them. Um, well, not know personally, but like, I, I, you know, I know of them. Right. And I, same thing. I was like, man, I would love to be on that show. I, you know, <laughs> it would uh, like, it would be awesome. Next thing you know, Ski Beats DMs me on Instagram, bro, what's your number? I'm like, what? I'm like, all right. You know, I didn't even ask nothing. I just, right. I just sent my number right back. I was like, right. no questions asked. Like here, I don't care if you're, you're <laughs> spamming me with shit. Like here, here's my number. So yeah. So ski, uh, he calls me up and he's like, yo, um, he calls me YT. He's like, YT. Um, uh, uh, do you want to, do you want to participate in the, in the smack pack live? I'm like, what? I'm like, hell fucking yes yeah i'm like i'm in there so he's like all right i'll send you the details so like That's that crazy. right there was another point where i was just like did that actually fucking happen like <laughs> you know i'm i'm i was just thinking this like two weeks ago like yeah. i want to be on that show and yeah. uh and it happened um yeah. so that was another like you know uh point where i felt that way like sort of just unreal like sort of disbelief like you know, is it ha is this really happening? Because I I I, I thought about it and and I wanted it and it, it you know, it was just it was it was a really beautiful moment um for that and, and the Serato thing too. That's gotta be that's hands down probably the best story I've heard because of <laughs> just like the, the random like did they really just message me? You yeah. know, this really real and I just asked for this. Oh, we're running out of time, so. Hold on right. a second, guys. So we're going to take a quick break and we're going to take a little uh, dip to our sponsors or from our sponsors and we'll be right back. Right. And here we are with our sponsor, DBT Deck. The DBT Deck, this is a way for uh, people that have maybe distress. They call it distress tolerance. So it's a, a, methods or, a method or methods to feel better, to get better, to work on yourself. And I, I think it's very important that we do so. So this is the exercise that we're going to do every week is the DBT moment. This one or the skill we're going to talk about today picked out is called improve the moment so improve is an acronym let me tell you what it stands for it stands for imagery meaning prayer relaxation one thing in the moment brief vacation encouragement so obviously there's a bunch of things in this one that you can do and work on to feel better but the skill in the acronym improve makes life a little better when it's at its hardest when in crisis you have a choice between sinking into your distress or investing in behaviors that might improve how you feel in spite of everything. Especially during the tough times, strive to improve the moment. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to improve the moment, which means we can sit there and all day long, I can think about how bad my day was and how, how sunken in I can feel. And I do it a lot, right? Where I keep thinking about the same thing over and over. And now you're in a negative spiral of what it is you're trying to do. So for that moment, try to catch yourself. And when you do so, maybe go go so somewhere alone, get away from all the centuries, nice quiet place. And you could do imagery, right? Thinking about nice things, oceans, views, um, mountaintops. You can look at pictures or watch videos of it. Something to kind of calm you down and get you out of that, that train of thought. Meaning, find or create some purpose, meaning and value in pain. Remember, listening to or reading about spiritual values, focus on the positive aspects of things. Focus on the positive aspects of painful situations. So it's, it's, it's tough. Really think about the meaning of things. Uh, prayer, open your heart. We know what prayer means. I pray a lot. Relaxation. <sighs> Calm down, hang out, put on a 15-minute um, binaural beat self. What's the word? Meditation video, so self or, or guided. Guided meditation video. Uh, one thing in the moment I do a lot. I just think of the one thing that I'm doing in that moment. So if I get stuck thinking too much or being in that rut, I think about what's in front of me, maybe focusing on one thing, maybe just looking at this deck and kind of really feeling the box and what's it look like, what's it feel like, what's it smell like, really getting my senses involved inside that. And a uh, brief vacation. A brief vacation is kind of just 
Taking a second, get out of there, give yourself a brief vacation. Get in bed, put the covers up over your head for 20 minutes, rent a room somewhere, do something where you're going to be on a vacation. Maybe sit outside on a beach chair and go on vacation for a little bit. Set some time in your day to kind of reset that structure of negative thoughts that you're having. And the last one is with encouragement. Cheerlead yourself, repeat over and over, I can stand it, it won't last forever, I'll make it out of this, I'm doing the best I can do. All right, that was a really fast way of doing it, but if you want to learn more about it, you can always get the DBT deck. I'll put a le uh, link down below, um, and definitely check it out because it's something I use almost daily. So I have to practice my distress tolerance. I have to practice my skills. Just like anything else, I have to practice having a better mind. So why not you? All right, I'll see you guys later, and welcome. Well, I'll see you guys in a second. Thank you guys for listening to this sponsorship. Other things like sports and moving around, being outside and stealing shit. Like, that's what I like to do. Um, I like, I got this shit. But just, I don't know what it is. Ugh. You explain this to me. <laughs> you explain that, this that, thing to me. That is an Akai MPK Mini. Um, <laughs> that is a MIDI control. Yeah. Uh, MIDI controller and... Basically, it, it can't produce music on its own, but when you connect it to um, a DAW, a digital audio workstation, and yes. you have virtual instruments, you can essentially use that to control the virtual instruments. So if you have a virtual instrument in a DAW like Logic Pro or GarageBand, right. um, you can hook that um, MIDI control up and then play you know, whatever, you know, it could be a piano, it could be a synthesizer, it could be even drums. Um, and you use that to essentially control the virtual instrument. Uh, if that made sense, I, you know. <laughs> yes, it made 100% a lot of sense. I was just asking how to use it, right? I've watched 13,000 uh, videos on how super, to use it. I get technical. it up onto there. Wow, did it turn on? Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> I get onto there and we just like play. You know, and yeah. I think that's the the most important part is just exposing them. I have guitars and electric yeah. guitars, not because I play them, but like we just want them to be surrounded by stuff that they might want to dabble with. Yeah. So I saw that shit for like 50 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. I met a kid in a parking lot, grabbed it, and then we hooked it up and now the kids just play with it. So it's I'm, actually I'm fun. telling you, it's it's like a special, it's a special thing to create, right? Yep. You know, even at that young age where you don't have the you know, all this other knowledge or, you know, understanding of, of what it is that you're doing. But like, you know, if you're a kid and then you hit this note and it makes this sound like it's creating something, you know, um, and then say you you hit another note and you can essentially create your own string of notes, you know, which is a melody. And that is your creation. That's yours. You know, nobody can take that. And um, I just really feel like that's the beautiful part about, you know, uh, creative outlets. Kind of like what you were saying and kind of to expand on it, because it's so very true. Like that you you can't there's nothing in this world that you can do and just say it's yours. Right. A lot of times you're doing things for other people or doing nothing. And if you are an artist and someone draws something, it's just your drawing, whether it's a, a vase or a flower, like that's your creation. You should be proud of everything you do. Now, with coming with that said, um, creating and what you do evolves, right? Just like life, life evolves, right? Mm -hmm. So we talked about it before. You you re read Cal Dweck, which is uh, The gr Growth Mindset, which is a really huge book. Uh, Grant Cardone's 10X or 10 times people have read. Um, what do you do and why do you think it's important to keep self-educating, to keep evolving? Um, yeah, I mean, for me, it, it all got started, um, you know, just to give some context, um, you know, w at that point where I was, you know, feeling that emptiness and unfulfilled, um, I got into, you know, self, you know, development, right? And, and I, I started, I, I landed on this YouTube page, uh, uh, Tom Bilyeu. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you ever heard of yeah, um, Quest Bar. Yes, yes. Yeah. The, so he's the the owner of Quest Bar. And then he came out with, I forget what the name of his show is called. Um, um, it's Blue. That's what I remember. It's Blue. Some, something. Like, but I, I came across that, you know, at, at, at just the perfect time because he, he had on a lot of guests um, who were in this, you know, this realm of 
you know, growth mindset. And, you know, I just started, you know, really diving into it, like, um, especially because I felt like I needed it at that time. Um, and, you know, I got into just reading a, a lot of uh, books about, um, you know, creating good habits and, and, um, you know, David Goggins, uh, yeah. you know, uh, stuff like that. And, you know, also like it, it, it kind of related to, to my job because I was a UX designer at the time. So I'm, you know, trying to do research on, on habits and people's habits, because, you know, that's what UX people do is we, <laughs> we pick up on, like, we try to figure out what people's habits are and then kind hmm. of manipulate it. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, I don't know how ethical it is, but um, <laughs> that's essentially what, you know, UX people do. Um, okay. So I was, I was, uh, you know, reading a, a, a lot of books about habits and, you know, Atomic Habits uh, by James Clear is a great book. Um, it's actually the source for my name. No. Oh. Um, but YTC, uh, like mm -hmm. sort of indirectly, right? So, you know, I was reading, uh, you know, James Clear Atomic Habits, uh, you know, how to build, you know, better habits to, to, to you know, just help you get to, to where you want to be. And this quote really stuck out to me. Uh, it was, it said, be the designer of your world and not merely the consumer of it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm like, man, that is so fucking true. Like why, you know, why don't I put my world into fruition? Um, instead of consuming everybody else's world, you know what? I'm going to create my perspective and shoot it out there instead of taking your perspective and putting it in here. Right. Um, and, and then it essentially like ballooned into like, you know, this world is, is, is yours to create, you know, there's no, hmm. yeah, th there's no boundaries on, on what this world is supposed to, to be, especially from your perspective. Um, you create your world. Like that's how deep it is. Like your world is created by you. Like so, build it how the fuck you want to build it. You know, and and I took that as, and, and I was like, yeah, you know what? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make music again. I'm gonna be beat maker, dad. You know, whatever the fuck I want to be, because right. you know, it, it essentially is that. Like I, I wanted to build and create my own world, and then it, it also dies into other areas that you know the name yours to create is like it want i wanted it to be inspirational too um because i feel like every single one of us has you know their own unique um outlooks and can create their own unique creations and and that's what I feel like that's what needs to happen because, you know, there could be these genius ideas that are out there that are just kept inside because, um, you know, maybe that's not the thing to do or, you know, you're, you're looked at as, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. What are you doing? Um, but if we all just create from our own, you know, from, from us, we'll get all these unique creations out here that just inspire and, and, and just, you know, it's, it's cheesy, but like create like a better world. Right. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's a two part, you know, the name YTC is, is that, but like back to your original question. Um, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That like, I love understanding where that came from, you know, and just yeah, understanding yeah. more where your name came from, like just 10 X who you are. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people can listen to this and like, oh, they'll see the initials and not really dig into what that actually means yeah you know, but what that means is super that's powerful like that's it's, powerful it's, it's a lot deeper and you know you know it's a lot deeper than than it, it is it's, you know i shortened it to ytc but right. um but yeah there is a lot of meaning behind it um it, like and i try to do that with with everything that i kind of put out there um but yeah i mean in in terms of you know just being like at this time, like, I wanted just to be the best version of myself. So like I said, you know, I just kept reading, um, you know, just books about habits and, and, and just reading, like, even if it's uh, um, an audio book, 
you know, listen, listen to an audio book. If you don't have the time to, to actually, you know, open a book, you can listen to an audio book yep. when you're, you know, out mowing the lawn or, you know, you're taking the train or you're riding in the car. Um, I, I, I think you need to, um, you know, just figure out ways to get better every day and just to, to be the optimal version of yourself. Yes. And, and let me put this out there that like, you'll never be perfect. Like there is no <laughs> perfect person in this world, you know? So yep. it's all, a, it's all about just getting better. Um, you know, not, not, not the, you know, the perfect version, just a better version than you were yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Is there, um, is there a, like a, not like a structure that you have to better yourself. Like, do you read a book a week or a month, or do you just like, this is what I'm focusing on. This is what I feel. I'm going to watch this today and kind of just like um, write it out. You know, like people have their routines. Like I have my yeah. routine. What's yours like for that? You so, know? so my routine um, for it is, is, is reading. Like, you know, I try to read a book every month because I, hmm. you know, uh, just, because of the time like I, I try to manage my time really specifically um and then um a lot of it comes down to music so the mm. thing i do with music is i try to make one track every single day Damn. um nice. every single day and i've Shit. done that i've done that for four years straight what every and day e e even if i'm not e even if i'm not in the mood Right. Even if um, I feel like, you know, I don't have the time, it's just been something for me that I, I, I want to get better at it incrementally. You know, it's not like I always liken it to the stair metaphor, you know, like you're, you're looking at the, the top of the stairs and you're like, oh, you know, you, you keep looking at the top and it's like, I want to get there. I want to get there. Like, no, I'm just trying to get to the next step. Right. And then the next step. And then the next step. So it's like make a beat every single day. And then, you know, in time, you'll get that much better. Right. Um, you know, just practicing your craft, being consistent. Um, and, 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 and that's kind of my routine. Um, you know, I, I, I like to, like I said, I like to run uh, yep. as much as I can. Um, usually in the mornings, um, it, it's a little hectic, you know, you got all the, you know, the daddy duties and stuff like that, yep. especially since I work from home. Um, you know, you got to take care of that. Um, but you know, I like to run, it gets me in, in a good sort of mind state. Yeah. Um, because cool. you know, I, I feel like, you know, it's another thing I, I took from, you know, learning about, um, you know, just you know, trying to be your optimal self is, you know, blood flow, you know, and, and, you know, exercise and, and running and, or even just walking, you know, you know, getting that blood flow, it can, you know, just let your brain operate better, you know, because of the blood flow, it gets the oxygen and the nutrients, you know, to where it needs to go. And, um, but yeah, so I, I like to, I like to run and then, you know, just, uh, I, I got, I, my my nine to five and then it's uh it, it's it's more so just trying to yeah trying to make it make music every single day that's that's my kind of routine for getting better at music yeah man that's again you just answered you answered the next question without <laughs> me having to ask Again, I was like, where do you find that work-life balance? You know, <laughs> you just gave it to me. I, that was literally the next question I was going to ask. And I was like, well, oh, here it comes. I don't, you, are, you are so in tune right now with what I'm about to say. I don't even <laughs> have to say shit no more. <laughs> no, I mean, but I can I can elaborate on that too. Yeah, though. please. Like the, the work-life balance is is something, especially when your work is is separate from the, the passion, right? So right. like my music isn't my source of income. I still need to work a nine to five to, you know, provide for the family. Um, so it, it's sort of like a, a work passion. Well, I mean, like I consider my passion work too. So like work sort of passion slash work and then life uh, balance is it's all about time management, right? It's um, so I try to schedule out every single piece of my day. 
So, um, you know, I'll have my own little schedule and it's like eight o'clock, take the kids, to st- take the kids to school. Mm-hmm. Um, I get back eight 45 to nine 15. I'll, um, I'll, uh, check, check emails. Nine fifteen to ten thirty is meetings. Ten thirty mm-hmm. to eleven thirty is listening to music. So like, I'll really get super granular with the time management. And, you know, I find that doing that, you don't get super overwhelmed with, oh man, I need to do this. I need to do that. It's like, no, I I have this all mapped out. So like every morning, like I have a specific plan that I'm going to, um, you know, attack. Right. So, you know, I, I, I I think work life balance is all based on your time management and you can get it all done. It's just about managing, managing your time uh, wisely. Absolutely. Time scheduling or even just bullets, right? Just make a list of things that you know, like you could get as detailed as, as you, I'm the same way, like eight to nine, bam, 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 five in the morning yeah. and walking, yeah. the, you know, it's the same routine, you know? Yeah. But the hard part is when it's time for your creation time, right? When you're done with the life, now it's time to create. And sometimes it's at the end of the night where everyone's sleeping. Like, and that takes a lot of discipline, Right to just step into the room, turn on the lights, and just start. You know, yeah. how do you? Is there one thing that you do, or is it just so ingrained now because you do at, it every day that it feels at, so normal? At this point, it, it's just normal. Yeah. Um, in the beginning, it was more of, you know, it's more. It was more of a just get there, you know, just just sit down there. Yeah. You know, it's like the gym metaphor, right? It's like, you don't want to go to the gym, but once you, once you get there, you're good. Like you just got to get there. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a sense. That's how it was before. But at this point right now, it's just be, become, uh, just a part of me and, and, and what I do. So it's like a no question that at nighttime, you know, from the, you know, 10 to like one is, is the creative time to, to make Very music. Cool. Very cool, man. See, I'm I'm opposite. Like I I hear you talking like ten to one. I'm like I'm sleeping. I'm done. Like I'm not. <laughs> but I'm the asshole that's up at four thirty, right? No, um, yeah. I'm that yeah. guy. Yeah. No. I mean, it, it it all depends on what's 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 you know what's good for you, right? Hell like yeah. you know what what works for you. Like it's not going to be the same blueprint for everybody. Everybody's mm-hmm. different. Um, you know, for me, I'm just not a morning person. Right. Um. You know, I, I I can, you know, do things at night and, you know, yep. I don't mind staying up that late, but I cannot stand waking up in the morning, you yeah. know, like <laughs> yeah. that's the rhythm, man. That's your rhythm. You can't exactly your body knows. Yeah. Right. And that's, yeah. that's been your rhythm for God knows how, how long, you know, for me, it's been my rhythm. I could go out. I used to go to raves all night and then come home at like five, six in the morning, go to sleep. And I'd still wake up like an hour later. <laughs> Cause I can't, like, I couldn't do it, but like, yep. if you need me to wake up early to drive you to the airport, I'm the, I'm the best. I'm the best person to bring to a cabin. <laughs> I'm going to remember that. Gonna yeah. Remember bring that. me to a cabin. <laughs> Breakfast will be cooked the whole, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. I never know what to do with myself. I go on vacation oh, with friends. Man. Everyone's sleeping. Everyone's hung over. I'm still drunk, but I'm already up. So I'm like, let me just keep <laughs> fucking cooking. I always say this, right? Everyone's like, Hey, you know, you want to hang out? You want to hang out sometime? I'm like, yeah, I'd love to hang out. But what time? <laughs> so it's like, oh no, we'll go out, you know, maybe after dinner. I was like, uh, how about you hang out with me at five in the morning? <laughs> like, Let's nah, do I'm that. Good, can man. I? Yeah, can I find these uh, friends? Uh, <laughs> oh, they're at church. That's right. Those are my friends. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, there's a whole science behind that too. I think it's called yeah. like circadian rhythm. Circadian too. rhythm. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, um, it's just your clock. It's your. It's and clock most people don't listen to it. They don't. Yeah. They yeah. force things they that aren't it. there. Yep. You know, that could mess with your mental. That messes with a lot of people's mentality. Like they're not supposed to wake up at that time. But Why they is put... it such a struggle? Because, yeah. Yeah. You're not supposed to. No. People yeah. gain weight and they, you know, they, they can't do this and they're not sleeping at night. It's literally because you're breaking the rhythm. If people just came in tune with that rhythm, you'd be able to do so much more. You know, right. I always believe yeah. that. I always yeah. believe that. All right. I'm going to ask you this last question because it's definitely going to be coming up to two o'clock Eastern Standard Time, <laughs> 11 o'clock. I got to pick up my daughter from school anyway. Um, is there anything that we didn't cover that I didn't ask you that you'd like to 
I don't know. I mean, we covered a wide array of topics. Um, you know, one I don't want to get into to too much because I don't you know, you know, I could talk forever. Um, <laughs> but you Part know, two it, is it, coming soon. It's it it it's been on my mind a lot recently um because um one of my one of my cousins actually they just launched a a podcast called Future Ancestors and mm-hmm. you know being that we're we're both Filipino um you know it it would be nice to have that discussion like just yeah. I don't know just um just the Filipino culture mm-hmm. filipino american culture um it, it it's just you yeah. know and how that how they deal with the passions that um well our, our generation have um you know it, just just that topic that that yeah. sort of topic maybe if we could have touched a little bit on that okay i i definitely know that we will run out of time yeah, if yeah, we yeah. do that but no no, no yeah i yeah. want part 2 and let's talk about that shit. <laughs> we could definitely do a part two. Oh, we definitely are. We are. Part two. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Because there's a lot of that that I believe that you're very passionate about. And I am not even aware of. You know yeah. what I'm trying to say? I'm a Filipino for sure. Yeah. But I grew up in the wrong side to be Filipino. I grew up with all Italians. So I could make yeah. pizza, chicken parm. I could make every fucking dish you want. <laughs> I know more about Italy than I do in the Philippines. <laughs> I just started cooking Filipino food when I was younger. Yeah, but I, I believe it's still culturally. I was grown up. I was raised Filipino with my parents. Yeah. Um, but I always wanted out. You know, I always yeah. want to connect and be. No, Italian. and in a, in a, yeah. in a sense, you know, that's kind of where where my mindset was at too. Like growing up, um, but it's just coming like full circle. Um, yeah. You know, the the older you get, the the more time do you have to reflect on certain things, and it, it's like you know that was a big, you know, I think you know that was a big part in influencing a lot of mm-hmm. my decisions. You know, a lot of the decisions I made growing up were you know partly due to, you know, or or is like what if I had the support for um, pursuing this? Would my life be different? Or mm-hmm. You know, or or just being treated a, a, a different way from, you know, other Filipinos or something like that. You know, like, it, yeah. it, it's just a really deep conversation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. Let's <laughs> do it. I like that. I like that. But here's a real quick question before we before we go. Um, every time I I say, I told like Kenneth and my brother, Jay, and I was like, oh, uh, Ron's going to be on the podcast this month. I was like, oh, Verb? I was like, excuse me? <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Who? <laughs> so, can you explain that for me, please? Yes, yes. So, you know, I I, I briefly got into it uh, early, uh, you know, earlier on. Um, I actually started off as um, an MC, like rapper, um, and my name was I, I went by the name of Ron Verb, which which was you know, uh, eventually turned short into Verb. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was. I don't know how well known I was in the Filipino community, but, um, you know, a lot of people knew me by that name, uh, by verb. So a lot of people, everybody still calls me that. Like even right. some of my cousins still call me that. Um, Kenneth still calls me that, you know, your <laughs> brother, like, you know, everybody, you know, right. I actually, you know, funny story was I got invited to a wedding and, um, you know, I gave my name at the door or, you know, wherever I was trying to get, you know, find out where I was sitting. And I was like, yeah, Ron DeLeon. I got, oh, we don't have you here. I'm like, what? Turns out, <laughs> turns out they put Ron Verb on the, <laughs> the actual <laughs> card. So and that's, that's, that's how much it sticks, you know? And yeah. <laughs> like, imagine uh, looking in, it's like, where is it? Oh, there it is. Ron Verb. <laughs> At a wedding, nonetheless. Oh my god, that's great. So, but yeah, that that is that is the backstory of, of, of verb. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. And like, like even saying that, like that culture, right? That's the culture I remember as Filipino. Like my brother, because yeah. he really surrounded himself, and you guys, like you guys, yeah. surround yourselves with a lot of Filipinos. Filipino parties, basement parties, reggae parties, downstairs, yeah. upstairs. You know, it was so tight. 
you know, yeah. that I never even knew there was this community of Filipinos that did stuff together. Yeah. And I was just the older guy that kind of just, you know, made sure I picked you up from Clifton and then I dropped him off in Jersey City. And then and that was it. <laughs> like, I didn't know what the fuck was going oh, on. Man. I was a taxi. You, you, it, yeah, I mean, I don't want to get because we're gonna have the part two, but yeah. you know, it, it it is really funny that you know there was that community, but at the same time, like I kind of you know felt on the outskirts of it, you mm. know, at times, like I felt you know um, not Filipino enough because you know I don't have the flat nose, I don't have you know my skin, like I have a darker complexion. Yeah. Um, so there was always that sort of um, you know. Uh, perception from other Filipinos was like, yeah, you know, I felt like, am I not Filipino enough? Like, do I need to, you know, wow, you know, so it goes a lot, you know, deeper than like they had the communities, but I still felt on the outside, you know, at right. times, um, which, you know, led to sort of me having like this, this sort of feeling towards my culture and, and, and Filipinos in general. It was like, <laughs> you know, all right, if you want me to be, you know, this other person, then you know what, you know, screw you, like, right. kind of deal. So right. there was a lot of different oh, emotions and feelings in that. So fucking, <laughs> fucking clap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I did not think you were going to go that way. But now I cannot wait for part two. Yeah, I cannot yeah. wait. To listen to this and just uh, real quick after what you just said like not looking filipino not being filipino enough it's weird my my wife just said downstairs um remember at uh, i remember one time at uh, cheche's house or my cousins your mm -hmm. friend um or sherry lou whatever fuck you want to call her and <laughs> um my mother-in-law was just like looking around she's quiet she hangs out in the back and she was like oh oh there's another dominican guy here <laughs> So the Dominican guy, Dominican guy. I was like, what is fucking Dominican guy? They got David. He's white Spanish. Fuck. Ron, uh, she thought you were Dominican. You know, exactly. I, was like, I was like, yeah, I never even I never even realized or even thought about that until an outside perspective. about that exactly. About that. And, 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 and you know what? It, it, it's just funny because like, you know, maybe you can expect it from other, you know, kind of races but then when it comes from your own sort of people quote unquote people it, you know it just makes it a little different you get treated a little differently and you know you have to go through your whole life getting treated and like why am i getting treated a little different than than this person because oh, oh it's because you know i don't look asian like right. enough you know like i right. can you know i always liken it to you know somebody could we could be wearing the same outfit but you know, I'll get treated differently because you know mm. they're, you know, they're a little yeah. less, um, I don't know, uh, lighter no. or you know w whatever, more Asian looking. So right, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's fucking weird. Yeah, it it it's is weird. weird. You know, it's and and, and it's something that you know I just had to to kind of run with and, and yeah. it, But you know, at the end of the day, you know, it made me who I am, and Absolutely. you know, I can't you can't go back on that and. Um, but yeah, there, there is a lot to unpack with that. Interesting. And we yeah. will unpack it, man. Yeah. I'm just gonna say thank you for part one. Yeah, right? yeah. Thank you for, for being here. Thank you for taking your time out. Thank you for telling us thank exactly yeah. what everything is, you know? Thank okay. you for having me. Like I said, Pete, like, you know, really, you know, fan of, of you, um, and the channel. So, you know, it's been a pleasure to, to kind of come on here and just have the conversations with you. Oh, yeah. We appreciate it, man. And we'll definitely reach out to you. Uh, YTC Music on Instagram. Yep. yep. YTC Perfect. Music on Instagram. Uh, YTC underscore music on Twitter. Um, YTC Music on Facebook. YTC everywhere. So everywhere. Reach out, show some love. I always respond to everybody. So, you know, I'm appreciative for everything. So. Thanks. All right, man. Well, thank you again. And guys, if you have not, always go to shit. I never changed the Patreon yet. If you want to go to patreon.com slash jersey to Vegas, please come down and support the channel. If you have not followed, uh, follow, subscribe, and do whatever else you want to fucking do. Because you're probably not going to do it anyway. But I'm going to keep doing this shit, and I'm going to keep being here. Thank you, Ron, for everything. And we'll see you next time. Peace out. <laughs>